Welcome back to Hunky Vape. I'm DJ Alex, and this is your Hunky Vape 5 on Friday, vaping news, science, and advocacy report for the 5th of February, 2021. On the news today, all major shipping providers have announced that they will no longer ship vape products to U.S. consumers. The United States Postal Service, FedEx, DHL, and UPS are scared shitless of the PACT Act. Prevent All Cigarette Trafficking Act. And the National Association of Convenience Stores is chomping at the bit because they know that they've already got everything in place from selling cigarettes to comply with the new regulations. Like I said before, mom and pop shops will be a fond memory of a bygone era very soon. Want me to prove it? Okay, stick around. I'll show you how impossible it is to comply with the Jenkins Pact Act. All right, all sellers of tobacco products must register with the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, and Explosives at the federal level. And the Tobacco Tax Administrator of every state where they intend to sell products. Mind you, every state has its own requirements on what it takes to sell tobacco in their state. Next come the reporting requirements. Monthly itemized sorted by location lists, including name, address of the buyer, brand and quantity in every shipment, name, address, phone number of the person delivering the shipment, and if the recipient of the delivery is different than the buyer, well, you got to have that information documented for submission as well. All shipping packages must also be labeled cigarettes, smokeless tobacco, Federal law requires the payment of all applicable excise taxes in compliance with applicable licensing and tax stamping obligations. Single sales are limited to 10 pounds or less. And the United States Postal Service is prohibited from shipping tobacco products. Shippers must identify the person that's getting the package using a government issued photo ID that gets documented and must be stored by the shipper for five years. Oh, and the shipper must also now police compliance with these laws, and they're legally required to turn in anyone they suspect that does not comply with the PACT Act. Yeah, they gotta turn them into the attorney general or the chief enforcement official or the tax administrator of all state, local, and tribal governments. Oh, and all taxes must be paid to the local, state, and federal agencies before any products are shipped. Yeah. By the way, the law stipulates that some states and locations require the shipper to also be the tax collector and collect the taxes before delivering the package because we got 50 different states and all 50 states have their own laws. And some states require that the shipper is the one that collects the taxes. And if you didn't know about the PACT Act requirements, don't worry, most lawmakers don't know either. In Indiana, Senator John Ford and Ronald Grooms proposed in Senate Bill 142, titled the Age Verification for Tobacco and Vaping Sales Act, it makes it a Class C infraction with a $500 fine per occurrence for any business or any person who doesn't use scanning technology or an automated software system to verify the purchaser's age. Why are they doing this? They want their tax money, of course. Oh, and in, also in Indiana, there's, there's a tax hype, a tax hike and a vape tax coming out of committee too. $2 per pack and here's how uninformed they are, $1.56 per two pod package. In Montana, their house endorses a repeal of the local vape product bans. Yeah, the state government saying local governments are not going to be authorized to come up with more stringent rules than what the state already has on the books. House Bill 137 defines vaping products separately from tobacco products as alternative nicotine products and vapor products. And you can thank vape shop owner and representative Ron Marshall for this glimmer of hope. 
Well, that is until somebody decides that, you know, it's unconstitutional because there's a federal law that oversees and overstates what the state's trying to do. So then we go to Kentucky, where Senate Bill 81 and House Bill 147 aim to do the exact opposite of Montana. They want to allow city or county governments even to impose restrictions and requirements stricter than the state law. Why are they doing this? Because according to a new 400 kid study, COVID-19 increased vaping and tobacco use for Kentucky middle and high school students. Yeah, you know what the study says? Kids were bored during lockdown, so they uh, went down to the local convenience store and they bought some smokes or vapes. You know, the local gas station. So now they need to regulate tobacco retailer density and create buffer zones around the schools. What the hell does buffer zones around the schools have to do with what people are doing at home? Whatever. In South Carolina, the Department of Revenue had a Greenville vape shop owner arrested for tax evasion claiming that he lied about his sales to avoid paying $60,000 in sales tax over the last four years. You see, he claims he only had $179,000 in sales or thereabouts, but the state says, oh no, according to what we can prove so far, you had over $1.2 million in sales. So he's in jail while they prove the four counts of tax evasion. <sighs> Let's leave the United States, all right? In South Korea, more than 83% of vapors break the law because they refuse to vape in designated smoking areas with smokers. Yeah. In Europe, the recently published Beating Cancer Plan sounds like it was written in George Orwell's 1984 because not making the distinction between smoking and smoke-free alternatives it's just going to relegate millions of smokers to keep their deadly habit and probably end up getting cancer. In New Zealand, the Otiroa Vapors Community Advocacy petitioned Parliament to debate the proposed flavor limitation of mint, menthol, and tobacco. Yeah, they're trying to limit the sales in your local dairies, your local convenience stores, to mint, menthol, and tobacco. You know, vapors need flavors to save lives. And limiting flavors has the opposite effect. You know, speaking of parliament, how about I introduce you to a New South Wales state member of parliament, Michael Johnson, who struggled to stop smoking until he found vaping. And naturally our highlighted advocacy group for the week is the Australian Tobacco Harm Reduction Association. And there we'll take a look at a nurse who quit smoking with vaping. And you know, since there's so much bad news this week, the final fun segment for today will be an article titled, How to Bring Vape to a Non-Vapor's Party. Yup, ain't nothing to it, but to get into it. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. I talked about it last week on the news. There were countless posts on Reddit about people panicking because UPS is jumping on board. And Vaping360 published an article about it too. He made the phone calls and he got the answer himself. And it's the same answer vape shops are getting all across this country. Well, here's another post on Reddit. UPS has joined the vape mail ban. Effective April 5th, 2021, UPS will not transport vaping products to, from, or within the United States due to the increasing complexity to ship those products. Mm hmm. And who's basking in the glory of this lovely legislation that's now imposed on all vapors in the United States? The same people that are selling the vapes to the kids right now. The convenience store 
industry applauds Congress and the sponsors of the Preventing Online Sales to E-Cigarettes to Children Act for its passage. Uh-huh. Yeah, why are they basking in the glory? Because they've already got all this documentation built into their computer systems. Doesn't mean they're using it. And doesn't mean that every convenience store and every gas station out there is a member of this organization and uses their software. But they applaud it. You know, the first comment on the Reddit post was it's obvious there is no other reason for this besides big tobacco. Despicable. Yeah? Big tobacco is only one part of the picture. You know, you can't forget about Big Pharma. They're out there lobbying every single day. And how about other big businesses? Yeah? Like the convenience store industry. How many times do you go out and you buy cigarettes? Where were you getting them at? At the local convenience store. More than likely, you're going to the local convenience store. Unless you happen to, you know, place your stuff from online. Illegally, technically. We all got our stuff at the local gas station. Because it's there. Everywhere. I guarantee you, no matter what size town you live in, there's a handful of gas stations and every single one of them sells cigarettes. So they already have the infrastructure in place to deal with this. Does mom and pop shops have any of this infrastructure in place? Are they registered with the ATF? Are they registered with their local state authority for selling tobacco products? Because that's what all vaping stuff is now, according to the omnibus bill. I mean, this coil, even though it's made of metal and cotton, is a tobacco product. There's no tobacco in it, but according to the law, it's now going to be a tobacco product. And, as usual, the lawyers always are going to win on this. Anytime there's a law in place, the lawyers are always going to win because they're going to fight it, right? Well, how about the laws right now? The lawyers that are out there that publish things are out there telling people, you need to get off your ass if you're a shop and you need to start doing the paperwork to get registered with the appropriate authorities to continue selling your vaping products. Yeah. Yeah. Here's the first article. We're gonna take a look at right from the expert, right from the horse's mouth. Sellers of traditional vapor products as well as hemp oil vapor products need to be aware of the new registration, reporting, shipping, packaging, record keeping, and other compliance obligations imposed by the omnibus bill the Consolidated Appropriations Act of 2021, to be technical. Sellers must take the steps now if they want to comply. Or might as well just plan on closing shop. So I've had plenty of people ask me lately, especially this past week, what are we going to do, man? What are we going to do? Well, if you happen to live next to a vape shop, and it's a reputable vape shop that is registered with everybody, has licenses plastered all over the wall. Okay, go in and ask them. Did you register with the uh, ATF? Did you register with the state tax authority to get your tobacco stamps that are not going to be placed on vape packages? There's your answer right there. And if you live out in the boonies and you got to drive hours to get vape products, I'd stock up now because you're going to be driving hours to a vape shop to be able to purchase things. Unless the convenience store industry all of a sudden starts carrying Smock and Vaporesso and all these other brands. 
because they're going to eliminate and decimate the mom and pop shops. It's hard enough to sell in one location to get the permits, to pay all the fees, to do all the paperwork that's required of it. What's it going to be like for a company that's just starting to grow? That's operating, you know, in like four or five states. Every single one of the states you have to require with, you have to register with. And they all have different requirements. What's going to happen to the mom and pop shops? You try and fly under the radar like they did for the PMTA? Hmm? They're already starting to target people. And they're already starting to go after people. And if you think the ATF messes around, <laughs> no. Sadly, it's getting to the point in this country where it's going to be easier for you to go out and buy a gun than it is going to be for you to go out and buy tobacco harm reduction. We're almost there. Let's take a look at the National Law Review. And there's another source of great information for you. If you got any questions about what's going to be required of these businesses, if you're one of those businesses, or if you were a business and you happen to be selling some vapes, well, you better think twice about what you're doing. And you better get your ducks in a row. And you better be operating as a limited legal corporation or as a corporate entity. So they don't come after your personal stuff. But that's not the way most mom and pop shops operate. Most mom and pop shops, they get a storefront, they open up, they get a local city business license and uh, they start operating. Yeah. The PACT Act changes all that now. In addition to the non-mailing provisions that we're all panicking over and worried about, the vape mail ban, the PACT Act also requires anyone who sells cigarettes or smokeless tobacco to register with the ATF. So no more running a computer shop and having some vape shit for sale. Gone. You're gonna be sitting there like Jay Hayes is with a crap ton of fucking inventory behind you that you can't do a fucking thing with anymore. You're stuck with it. Because the state no longer lets you do it. And now the federal government is coming in and being the next bully, bully thug, and running you out of business. But if you bank some dough and you've got some lawyers, now's the time to get your ass in gear. Because you got to go register with the ATF, then you got to register with your state. And if you're selling in multiple states, like, let's take a look at Element Vape. They sell in all 50 states, right? Well, technically, you guess you can't sell in states like, you know, New York, but Massachusetts. But the rest of the states, every single one of them, they're going to have to register with their tax authority there. And what screws people the most, you not only have to comply with collecting state and federal sales tax, now you got to figure out what the local sales tax is because if some city decided they were going to pass an excise tax on vape gear, you got to collect that too. And if you ever get audited and they find out that you were selling shit to somewhere that had taxes and you didn't pay them, you're going to go to jail for tax evasion. So I hope you got some accountants and keep track of all this paperwork gonna be a massive hiring spree I guess at these uh bigger vape companies I don't know like I said last week I'm not a uh seer visionary I, I don't know what's gonna happen but I do know that people are panicking right now because this has teeth when the PMTA was passed everybody was like oh man yeah or whatever I might just lose a couple lines of juice because nobody's worried about the FDA. They're going, what are they going to do? Send a couple letters before they actually go around to actually doing something? ATF doesn't mess around. When they come in and they, they take everything you got, you're already done for. They already got their proof. 
your only saving grace might be a lawyer that can get you out of it. Depending on how much paperwork you have. At least you can make the argument of, you know, good faith. You did everything you could in good faith. You didn't know about this little town in Boohoo, wherever, India. Or whatever town in uh, Colorado. Montana. Take your pick. The vape war is going on all around us. And nobody really paid attention because it didn't affect them personally. This is going to affect a lot of people personally. No doubt about it. The PACT Act also requires sellers to file a monthly report with their state. So, Element, if they're going to continue selling in all 50 states, theoretically, we're going to need to file 50 reports to 50 different states of everything that they've done, who they sold it to, who shipped it, who was the one that signed for it. Better keep track of that photo ID, too. Five years you have to keep records for. And the shippers, the reason they're saying, oh, no, I don't want any parts of this, because the law requires that if they suspect somebody of not following the law, not following the PACT Act, they're required to turn them in. No, they don't need to open up every single package that's shipped through their thing. But if they're delivering to a vape shop and their vape shop is not registered as a vape shop with the appropriate tobacco licenses, that driver is obligated to turn you in. To call the Attorney General and say, oh man, Dickie's Vapes over here they don't have any stuff on the wall. They're not registered. We're getting a bunch of packages sent to them. Every single day we're delivering stuff to them, but they're not registered as a uh, tobacco retailer. We got to turn them in. So then the attorney general starts an investigation and bye bye mom and pop shop. Take a look at the actual sources. There'll be uh, links in the description below. And if you're the, you know, you're like, oh, I didn't know any of this stuff was going on. I didn't know what the laws were about selling tobacco. I didn't know that the omnibus bill made everything a tobacco product. Don't feel bad. You're not the only one. There's lawmakers that are passing laws right now because they want to do what's right for these kids. They want to ensure that age is verified for tobacco and vaping sales. That's already a federal requirement. However, we have some lawmakers, senators in Indiana, proposed Senate Bill 142. Age verification for tobacco and vaping sales makes it a Class C infraction, punishable with $500 fine per occurrence if a person or a retail establishment sells or distributes tobacco, e-liquid or electronic cigarettes without performing age verification of the purchaser with scanning technology or automated software systems. Just like when you go to buy a handgun, they got to call the 800 number in, verify that, you know, you're allowed to purchase? Yep. No difference anymore. And that's not enough. We all know why they're doing this. They want their tobacco money. You were paying them all them taxes all these years. And when you quit smoking, where did that tax money go? Oh, you got to like, you know, go out to eat once in a while or order some more stuff or Start a vape collection. They want their money. They want that revenue stream back. So, also in Indiana, there's now a cigarette tax hike. They're doubling the taxes there. The state cut of it. From a dollar a pack to two dollars a pack. And the law specifies for a dollar fifty-six tax for two pod package. 
two pod package. What are they gonna do when they find out about open tank systems? Oh, wait a minute, they're technically not considered, you know, defined under their laws, so. It's not just Indiana. House endorses repeal of local vape product bans. We talked about Missoula, Montana and the ridiculous ban that extends five miles outside of their town. And how they kind of like, you know, had to draw that back. Well, here's why. A bill to prohibit local governments from putting regulations on vaping and alternative nicotine products got the initial approval from the Montana House on Friday. A proposed the, a proposal carried by a lawmaker who co-owns three vape shops was the one who sponsored this bill. And because of the bill, Missoula City Council delayed activating the law until after the lawsuit from this guy. Well, we'll have to follow this and see what happens. See if this bill gets passed. Montana State going... Oh no, you're not gonna make laws in your city. The state's responsible for making laws that affect the whole place. You can't make a law stricter than what we have. So, here's Kentucky doing the opposite. Yeah, we have Senate Bill 81 and House Bill 147 in Kentucky they're gonna create a new section of KRS 438.305 to 438.350 to permit, allow city and county governments to impose restrictions or requirements on the use, display, sale, and distribution of tobacco products or vapor products that are stricter than those imposed under state law. In order to do that, they have to repeal something to make it effective because they already got one in place that says you can't make laws that the state doesn't already have. And why are they doing this? Because there's a study that was done. Pandemic increases vaping and tobacco use for Kentucky students. According to the survey, the survey of 400 middle and high school students, 400 students are now responsible for them deciding to pass these new laws. Oh my God, we gotta do something. So we're gonna punish all the adult vapors and all the shop owners because of one survey from 400 kids. Yeah, that almost makes sense. All about tax money. That's what they want. They want their taxes. Either ban it or tax it. Or do both. That almost makes sense, doesn't it? Well, here we go. Greenville, South Carolina. Vape shop owners accused of evading $60,000 in taxes. He was arrested Wednesday after state agents said that he misreported his income to avoid paying more than $60,000 in sales tax. Wait till after April when this goes into place. And it isn't just sales tax that you're avoiding paying. How about your 95% excise tax on electronic cigarettes for your state that you have to collect? And don't think the federal taxes aren't coming next because it's considered a tobacco product. I'm waiting till somebody catches on to the fact that, you know, flavored tobacco is illegal. So since vaping is now considered a tobacco product or the flavors that are in your tobacco product legal, or are they already banned? Because now we're grouped definitively with cigarettes and tobacco. It's 
a very bleak forecast in this country. It's not the way it is in the rest of the world. This this country just did a U-turn with one omnibus bill. All to protect the kids. Little Timmy, we gotta look out for little Timmy. And little Tina. How about in Korea? Let's get out of the United States. How about in Korea? Over 83% of vapors break the law regularly. Because in Korea, South Korea, there's designated smoking areas. And their books and their laws also classify vaping as tobacco. And you're only allowed to use it in designated smoking areas. And just like me, when I quit smoking, I didn't want to be hanging out with smokers. Did it bother me if I did? Not really. But if I was still working at the hospital like I was decades ago, and I had to go into a little butt hut in the middle of winter, that's like three meters by one and a half meters, you know, like a little bus stop. That was the smokers area where all smokers had to go to smoke. It's the only place on the whole property you were allowed to smoke. Would I want to use a 95% safer product in the confines of a butt hut? No. The whole thing that makes this 95% safer is if you give up your deadly combustible cigarette habit. If you're doing this and you're smoking, that smoke has the same effect as if you were actually lighting the cigarette up in your mouth yourself. So I don't blame these South Koreans for breaking the law because if they were to follow the law, it would be detrimental to their health. They don't know that in Europe, though. Remember the leaked beating cancer plan? Yeah. Well, it's now been published, and the European tobacco harm reduction advocates are crying foul. Justifiably so. Because there's beating cancer plan does the same thing the United States did. It lumps tobacco harm reduction in the same category as tobacco. And it's abstinence or die. That's their philosophy. So, I made the reference earlier. This is like, you know, George Orwell's 1984. Yeah, their beating cancer plan is actually a plan to keep the cancer rates as high as possible. Because when you take and eliminate flavors and you lump this in and treat this the same way that you do cigarette smoking, you're going to keep people smoking longer because you took the off-ramp from the smoking highway and got rid of it. Way to go. Take a look at the article yourself from Tobacco Reporter. So let's go to New Zealand. It's been nearly a year since the parliament petition on vaping flavors closed. Exactly six months since the government's vaping legislation was passed. The petition organizer has submitted a supporting supplementary submission at the Health Select Committee's request. Why are they doing this? Because the ridiculous limitations to mint, menthol, and tobacco is stopping people from giving up their deadly combustible cigarette habit. Over 17,000 people signed the petition before it closed on the 31st of March last year. So you would think that at the petition closes, they're gonna go right to the government for them to deliberate and discuss and review. 
and oversee. How long did it take the government to actually look at that petition? How about August of last year? Which was conveniently five days after the vaping legislation was passed. Yeah. Take a look at this article from Scoop. So, speaking of Parliament, how about we take a look at an MP from New South Wales, Michael Johnson, tells his story of quitting smoking with vaping. My name is Michael Johnson. I am a Member of Parliament for the Upper Hunter in the New South Wales Parliament. I started smoking uh, as a child as, when I was nine and I was given my first Alpine and uh, that started me on the path of smoking which, uh, to be honest, I probably end up regretting. I tried to quit smoking in other ways, particularly around cold turkey, uh, the traditional method of cold turkey, and um, it, it, it didn't work. Uh, you, you put yourself into a, a number of situations, particularly social situations, uh, where you might be at a barbecue or party or something and you have a beer or wine and all of a sudden you, know, you, you feel like that, um, that whole habit comes back and you need to have that cigarette. And, and it could be as simple as going out and having a chat to people and everyone, or well, a handful of people around there smoking. And you know, it's just part of that social scene. Um, but you know, it, it, it's too difficult to do that. Whereas if you've got other methods, then it, you, it makes it a lot easier to be able to do that. I first came across vaping when a friend of mine did a bit of research and introduced uh, vaping to me, uh, told me about it. Uh, in fact, bought me a vape and um, I tried it and I thought, well, I'll, I'll give this a shot, see what happens. It probably took me a week to get used to it and but I persisted because I wanted to give up smoking. I persisted and I haven't looked back and I've been feeling so much better ever since I started vaping probably over 12 months ago now. Yeah, the health benefits for me uh, I'm finding quite significant in so much as, you know, you, you don't have, I never had a major cough, but I, I did have a regular cough and I don't now. Yep, got rid of his cough. I got rid of my smoker's cough too. You want to watch this, there'll be a link in the description. And this all comes from ATHRA, the Australian Tobacco Harm Reduction Association. Now we've covered the we've covered this organization before, and there's a link in the bottom of all my videos that I do when I do advocacy to this organization. Let's take a look at Rachel's story. Nicotine patches caused severe skin irritation to the point where my skin came off with the patch. Lozenges, gum and spray caused severe gastric distress. Champix put me in hospital suicidal. Fifteen months ago I had a family member that suggested vaping to me. Uh, he'd been successful with quitting smoking using vaping and knew the struggles that I'd gone through with, with other quit methods and thought that it would probably be a benefit. Um, he took me to a local vape shop and I bought my first device and within days I was vaping and that was 15 months ago. I haven't picked up a, a cigarette since and I have no intention to provide Yep, vaping works. Pharmacological products prescribed by doctors have side effects. She's not the only one. You've all seen the Chantix stuff out there. Vaping works because it's close enough to your previous habit. You have the mouth feel. You have the hand to mouth action. You can get the nicotine if you choose to utilize it. You can taper yourself down easily. That's why vaping works. 
All right, all right, enough of the bad news, enough of the advocacy. Take a look at the um, link yourself. It'll be in the description below. How about some good news, some fun stuff, huh? I chuckled when I came across this article in filmdaily.co. How to bring vape to a non-vapers party. Take a look at this article. Do you consider yourself to be an avid and professional vapor whose lifestyle is unique? Well, no, I'm an avid vapor, not a professional vapor. If vaping is a part of who you are, it's only natural that you want to take your premium vape flavors with you whenever you go out. Well, yeah, you take your vape with you just like you take a pack of cigarettes. Right? Or like you used to take a pack of cigarettes. Well, you've been invited to a party hosted by people who don't share your interest in vaping. Unlike your usual vaping parties where you see dozens of vapors with new mod models, competitive vaping rings, and fantastic vape flavors, you're going to have to play it cool. You can bring your vape probably but the chances are that not everybody will be gladly try a vape or two. I don't let people try my vape. If people are interested in vaping, I'll give them a vape kit to, to quit smoking, but I'm not giving them my vape. This is the COVID that's going on. What the word? How about let's continue this article, shall we? I mean, this is a hoot. Let's see how to bring your vape to a party full of non-vapers. First, you need to prepare your party vape. Wonder if my wife will let me buy another vape if I tell her I need a party vape so we can go to parties. I'll, to, I'll, to, I'll, to, I'll let you know how that works out. Everything starts with a thorough preparation of your vaping gear. If you want to show off in front of non-vapers like a real vape expert, the last thing you need is a battery failure or a vape juice leak in the middle of performing a cool trick. Simple preparation and a bit of forward thinking should do the trick and leave you fully prepared for the party. Check your equipment. Check your vape, take it apart, clean everything, and make sure that you tighten all parts properly. This will help you to ensure that your vape is leak free and airtight and allow you to chase clouds throughout the night without any problems. Yeah. You can't perform vaping tricks like a professional if you have a leaking vape or blow big clouds of thick vapor if you cough all the time. Oh, I quit coughing when I picked up vaping and quit smoking. Maybe this guy's got some vaping problems. What's he vaping? Check your gear to make sure it's in top shape before you start showing off your flashing vape mod. I know that there are a couple mods out there that do flashy flashy, but mine just has a little tiny light on the bottom. Lights up, nothing to really show off. I didn't get into vaping to be a show off. Got into vaping so that I could stop smoking. However, let's let's just humor the guy. Bring spare batteries and a refill bottle with you. Well, I do that every time I go out. If I'm gonna be gone for any length of time, because you don't wanna have a dead battery and then you can't vape on the way home might stop and get a pack of cigarettes relapse oh that would be horrible take it yeah have an extra battery and an extra bottle of juice throw one in your club box as long as it's not too hot because that'll ruin your your juice and your batteries since you'll be going to a non-vapors party no one will be there to lend you a battery or a refill bottle if you run out of vape juice. On the other hand, the chances are that some of the first time vapors might fall in for vape clouds after trying it for the first time. It's, and we're not here to entertain people with our vapes. 
listen, if we're hanging out with a bunch of vapors and we want to show each other some cool tricks, okay, that that I understand. There's a subculture here. We all like to hang out with the people that are like-minded and share our interests. But why would you go to a party and try and turn it into a vape expo? I don't think so. That's just ignorant. Well, one thing that is very accurately put in here is be mindful of others. If you vape nicotine, you should be careful when bringing your Nick vape to a non vapor party. Check with the host to make sure it's okay to vape indoors. And some will insist that you take it outside. Others will be cool about it. Regardless of whether they're cool about it, or they tell you to go outside, be mindful, polite, courteous, and considerate about where you choose to vape. When you're in your own house, you do as you please. You go to somebody else's house, be considerate. We have enough battles to fight already in the vaping industry. Seriously. Anyway, there'll be a link in the description below. And that wraps up this five minute Friday, which ain't a five minute Friday. Ain't even a five article Friday. But this wraps up your vaping new science and advocacy report for the 5th of February, 2021. Already February. Time's just slipping by. Anyway, my message is still the same. Keep on vaping and have a great day.